Hello everyone, this is Russ Grease with RWGResearch.com and today is a very special day. Told you there's going to be some really cool, interesting, and exciting things coming up. Today is one of those days. Um, you get to see high quality, crystal clear pictures of the EPG system from Stan Myers. Um, I've acquired these with your help and being con in contact with certain people uh, throughout the community of people in this uh, field of research and um, with your donations and help I was able to get these I did actually have to purchase these pictures but I have all of the high quality pictures of the EPG system so basically here we go let's get started um, the deal is uh, I'm trying to weasel out the people who don't really want to want a part of this so in order to do this uh, to get these pictures for yourself uh, you will have to go to um, rwgresearch.com, click on My Projects Pages, click on Stan Myers EPG, and you will find a link to the, um, to the uh, photos, but they will be posted over at open-source-energy.org. You will need to make a login and then find the forum in which the uh, photos will be placed, and then you can download them. The reason I'm making it somewhat difficult to get to the photos, uh, again, is because I'm trying to weasel out the people who uh, don't really care. Um, and those of you who do, you will find them. And some of you are already registered and you're there. Um, go download them. They're there. Um, the forum will probably be called uh, EPG High Resolution Photos, um, something along those lines. I will put the links in the description of this video. If you're not watching this video, on my channel. Um, my channel is RWG42985. So go over to opensourceenergy.org um, with dashes in between those words uh, and my site is rwgresearch.com. You can donate to this research and help get more of these types of things and uh, get more information out there to the public but uh, I'm donating these uh, pictures with, uh, with donation money to the rest of the world so they're all yours to see. So, you're welcome, and thank you. Couldn't do it without your help. Uh, I really couldn't do it without your help, so thank you. Let's get started. I'm going to explain to you everything I know about these photographs. Um, I'm going to tell you what I know. I already traced out the schematics. Uh, I figured out how they work. Interestingly, they're not really anything special. It's just a mere simple schematic. Um, pretty cool stuff. I'll, I'll show you, and uh, let's get started. Here we go. All right, everyone. So hopefully you can see these quite clear and everything's fine. This video should turn out all right. Um, basically, I'm going to go through these photos with you. Um, I will be labeling these photos by certain numbers so that us talking about this over at the forums can tell which photograph we're talking about. So when you, when you talk about this uh, over at the forums, reference the picture number that you are talking about. All right. I do not have them labeled right now. I'm just going to go through them. So you can see the EPG, and um, this one's got the mechanical pump on it right here with the two coils. Uh, this one has what looks like to be some sort of a heat pump. Um, I cannot figure that out, actually, what, the, what that actually is right this moment. Um, see, that's one thing I'm still wondering. So if you've seen that type of device before and you know what it is, let me know. It's got three wires on it, a black, a red, and a white. So probably a hot, a neutral, and a hot. Um, that's what I would think. It's, uh, supposedly this is the EPG system that's pulsing. Um, the sequential pulsing one if you watch Stan videos. So that's kind of interesting. These cables right here are from an oscilloscope. They're not part of this system. So you know. Alright. Computer's acting kind of slow. Alright, here's a side view of the EPG system that is pulsing. Uh, you can see here on this transformer, you can see what the output voltage is. Computer's really slow, bear with me. Not sure why it's so slow. But here you got secondary, it says 12.6 volt 3 amps. Alright, that's what this says right here. So the transformer runs the circuitry. Uh, you can also see some of the switches over here. 
I believe that this knob and this is actually a potentiometer and that determines the frequency at which this is running at. Uh, one switch is for the power and uh, one switch is for the uh, the circuitry. I think that one might not even be hooked up, but I know one's for the power for the primary, one is for the power for the secondary, and then the switch here is for the frequency. I don't believe this is a selector switch. I'm pretty sure it's a potentiometer because when I traced down the circuitry, that's what it looked like. Uh, there's also a fuse here and then your power input. Uh, all these EPG systems have the exact same thing on the side of them. They're all the same transformer as far as what I can tell and the same setup for the switches. Uh, you can see there's a little power light here to indicate that it's on. This cable is nothing. It's just sitting here uh, on this board. Uh, this is the, the EPG where it's pulsing back and forth and back and forth uh, through this coil and that coil. It's like alternating the gas within the core. What's interesting about these uh, the photographs is I found out that this particular EPG was dated before the one with the mechanical pump. So he tried the oscillation and then he tried the mechanical, mechanical pump and then it looks like he went on to the heat pump type. I believe that's what it is, just sequential firing. There it is from the top. Now, these photos are really cool. And one reason they are really cool is because you can see what the materials are made out of. Um, this right here looks like an aluminum plate with around an eighth inch plexiglass divider. There are five coils on here. So that is actually a control knob off of, let's just say, some sort of a uh, stereo or a piece of equipment. And it's, it's merely in there to hold these coils in place, um, as far as I, can, as I can tell. These rods that go around the outside of here are eighth inch brass rods. Some of them are threaded, some of them aren't. This one, uh, I believe, is not threaded. And what he's got here is all these coils are wired in parallel. Every one of the output coils is wired in par parallel around the outside of this. All the way around. And he's got them all connected to one output. Um, these, this little section looks like it's separate from the section around the out outside. As you can see, there's four wires coming off here. So I'm thinking this would be the feedback into your system to keep it moving. And this is all your output. So this is all you need to sustain this and the circuitry. From what I can tell, that's what it looks like. These uh, pictures are kind of scrambled, so we'll just go through them here. There you can see the date. Um, see, and this is listed 1983, 1982, but the circuit board says 1981. All right. There's some more pictures. These are high quality. Here you can see the outputs. Um, you got two that are from this whole section and two that are from this short section. So in my opinion, these were your your pickup for return uh, energy into the system and all the other ones are output. Which is pretty incredible if you look at it. This is heavier gauge wire than these, in my opinion. I believe these are thinner wire. Uh, you can't really see the wire too well in some of these, but I've done some looking and some calculating and that's what it seems to be. Um, this looks like you could run gas through it all the time or you could just fill it up and let it go. Uh, here's a very nice high quality close up of the coil size, the wire size, the brass bars here, and the pipe. I've done calculations on all these things. I'll show you that on the end here. And uh, calculated the pipe size, the coil size. I don't know if I calculated the wire size, but it's a heavier build in between a 20 and 22. Um, is from what I've calculated. You guys can do that for yourself if you want. Here it looks like there's some red paint or coating on this pipe. And I don't know if that's to insulate the pipes from each other or not. But these are copper pipes. Everything is copper in this system. Go to the next one here. Alright, that's the one with the, um, with the device that we're not sure what it is. Um, it, it's got to be some sort of a heat pump mechanical like oscillating heat pump or something I'm sorry not mechanical electrical but here, here you can see um, uh, my computer is really slow today alright here you can see the outputs and they are 
there are four bars across here. Okay, and you got a couple coils tied onto the inner bars, and all the other bars are on the outside. And you can see how they're how they're connected here. So the top bus bars and the bottom bus bar looks like they're the outputs for the main output, and then these inner bus bars might be the output for the uh, return into the back into the system. Um, as far as what I can tell. All right, now here is the back of the one that is oscillating back and forth, back and forth with the five coils on each side. Um, this circuit is, uh, we'll get back to this circuit, but I wanted to show you the date. That's what I primarily wanted to show you here. Um, the date is 1981, all right? Stanley A. Myers, 1981. And on the other circuit board, it's 1982. So this one was actually created before that one. All right. And I'll explain to you more here once we get into it. This is another great picture of the heat pump looking one. I really don't know what that is. So if you guys really do know, please let me know. That'd be nice to know. Um, here you can see the side of it. Whoops. Go back. All right. So here you can see the outputs. Got two reds, two whites, and the red, white, and uh, black from the device that's back here. And you can see this is sweated copper pipe. I have looked and looked and looked, and I cannot find a stamping on the pipe that tells me what size it is. I have looked all over the place. Um, one thing that concerns me about the date on the circuit board and the device itself um, is you can see. Well, this one doesn't have a date on it. But as you can see, the clamps that are holding the wire together are really nice. And all the other ones are just plastic dividers. Uh, this looks like it would be a lot easier to do than the plastic dividers. So you got to try to look at that when you try to figure out maybe when they were, when they were built. Here you can see the circuitry pretty well. Um, one thing to take note of here are the coils and the dip switches. There are five coils here, okay, right along here, and there are uh, ten dip switches. There's five coils on each side and ten dip switches. Each one of those dip switches goes to a coil. All right, I'll talk about that one in a second. I got to go to the uh, original one first. Some more pictures. Same circuit board, 1981 on it. Another side view. Um see what else we got here. Another nice close up of the brass bars and the coil. You can see here how the plastic dividers are a little more cheaply made than those other ones were. Maybe to get a feel of when he was uh, when he was making these. I believe these were made probably before the other one in my opinion. Lots of really nice photographs. Now here you can see a aluminum divider and a plastic divider. Um, on the end there, I don't really know why he would do that. I would think he would use some sort of another alloy than aluminum. But then again, we talked about plastic pipe and copper pipe. It's hard to tell. Um, there's got to be a reason for it. We'll just have to do some testing to figure it out. Now, this is the one I really want to talk to you about first. And basically, I have traced out this circuit. Um... And what I want to tell you about this circuit is there's a circuit out there already that's the 8XA. came out of the uh, demo cell um, from Stan Myers. If you watch the videos online, you can see the demo cell and the little black box hooked up to the alternator and stuff. This is identical to that circuit. Um, there's nothing more special. All it is is a 555 timer here and uh, three decade counters or divide by 12 and a hex inverter chip. Uh, there are two opto isolators here that run the um, uh, transistors there. Each one of those transistors is for this coils, two coils. There's a rectifier. There are three capacitors uh, and a on this side here there's a voltage um, controller to steady out the voltage. So you got 12 volt coming in uh, here you can see the voltage uh, regulator, the voltage regulator. Uh, there's a capacitor here, 
capacitor here and a resistor here. Those are for the 555 timer. Uh, this capacitor actually I believe is for the um, uh, frequency, I'm sorry, voltage regulator, this capacitor. Uh, this capacitor is for the timer, resistor is for the timer. Uh, there's a diode here and a diode here uh, for the coils. The back EMF does not spike the system. Basically, here's what I've drawn up. See if I can get a little bit closer shot on that. Alright, so this is what you got on this board. Um, again, I say there's nothing special about this because it's nothing more than a frequency generator uh, with divider chips so you can divide the voltage and pick a place that you want to pull it off at. Okay, so you got here, you got a 12-volt, uh, 12.6 volt transformer, 3 amps. The green wires are coming in. They go to the bridge rectifier. Those go to the capacitor. The outside of the bridge rectifier goes to the capacitor and then to the voltage regulator and then to the circuitry. Now also you got to know where does the um, coils get their energy, okay? It comes in through the transformer, gets rectified, and then goes directly out to the transistors here. Alright, so what that means is when you pulse this coil, you've actually got internal uh, uh, you know, uh, what is it, 60 hertz, 60 cycles per second from the AC transformer. You've got a full bridge rectifier, fire, so you've got those, um, you know, spikes within this going to the uh, transistors back to the coils. That's something to think about. There might be something interesting about that, but that just might have been the easiest way to do it as well, instead of smoothing it out. So here you got a 555 timer. You got two potentiometers on this circuit board. The one is uh, hidden; it's very hard to see. Then you've got the yellow wires go out to a potentiometer on the uh, on the controls out there. And then uh, you've got the 555 timer. Then you've got the decade counters. There's three of them, and then the hex inverter chip. Um, you actually can't buy the divide by 12 chips. They're they're newer and they're different. You can still get the equivalent, but you can't buy the well, you can buy them, I'm sorry. You can find them, but not at your generic store. You have to get them from specialty places online. I looked them up. They do carry them. Um, and then the hex inverter just takes this signal and inverts it. Now, the decade counters, what they do is they divide. They're, they're divide by 12, but they don't have the last two hooked up, so it's a divide by 10. So if you set this at, let's just say, 1,000 hertz, then you can divide it and divide it and divide it, and then you... Uh, switch the signal, turn it around. If it's a high pulse, then now it's a negative pulse. Um, and he did that merely to uh, use the signal how he wanted. So that is basically identical to the 8XA circuit. So you can find that online anywhere, or you can trace this one out, or you can use this schematic. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, the output goes to two opto isolators, which then run the transistors. Now, what's interesting is from what I can understand and read and from what I've traced out, these two coils get pulsed at the same time. They're not uh, pulsing opposite. They're pulsing at the exact same time. Uh, and I do not know the reason. Maybe just because of mechanical pump, they're trying to isolate that within the system. Um, but there it is. There's a schematic for that. I will take a picture of this and I'll add that to the photographs. All right, what else? More photographs of this thing. Um, one thing I want to talk to you about is ferrofluid. If he used ferrofluid within this particular system, I would say it would be a good um, exclamation of why this copper pipe is corroded. All right. You can see the corrosion on this pipe, and it, it's a green corrosion, so you can tell that it's copper. Um, I believe if he did use the ferrofluid and he spilt it on here, that stuff would eat to this copper. So that kind of concerns me. What does the inside of the pipe look like if the outside's that bad? Um, it could have been from other chemicals and tests, but my guess is the ferrofluid. And the main reason is because he's got a mechanical pump. Um, you can use a mechanical pump with gas, but it's not going to go... You know, why would you need a big old mechanical pump if you're pumping gas? You could you could use a different type of pump. So those are my opinions, but uh, very interesting. Again, you see the control knobs. Here you can see a little dash, a little line. Um, and what that line is, is the dial. 
has a line on it. Okay. So you can see it right there. You see the little dash. That is the line. Very interesting. Uh, there's also an LED on this circuit board. I didn't point that out, but it's just a pulse LED. When that's on, it starts pulsing. Um, again, you can see this just has plexiglass, what it looks like, eighth or quarter inch, with no aluminum sidings. Oh, I don't really know why. I guess that's in focus. Hope the camera's not out of focus. There's the back side of that circuit board, and here's what I want to point out about this circuit board. The date right here 1982 okay 1982 right there it is so this circuit board was made after the other circuit board but there could have been some changes um, and he went with a newer or older circuit board with the same EPG to try different uh, different circuits so I'm not ruling out when it was made or when it wasn't made I'm just showing that to you for your own good so there it is, the wonderful diagram, the opposite of what this is, because it's upside down. And there you go. Um, there are a bunch of photos here. I am giving them all to you so that you can study them as hard as you want um, and, and see what you guys think. Here you can see, see if we can see the wires, here are the yellow wires and they look like they're hooked up right here to this potentiometer kinda out of the screen there aren't I? there you go, now you can see it the yellows look like they go to the potentiometer and the yellow wires are connected right here between these other two potentiometers and I believe that's for frequ frequency adjustment okay again you can see the corrosion, you can see the pipes you can see the coil here, you can see how, how deep the coil is I've got all these measurements made out. I'll let you make some of your own. I've attached the file of the measurements on the end of here as well. More photos. These are extraordinary photos. Um, and I'm, I'm super excited to be able to give these to you. Okay, here's a photograph of an EPG. It doesn't have a base, but it's got this tube. Okay, and that other one that looks like some sort of a heat pump is slid onto this tube alright in my opinion it's slid on here and mounted so I'm gonna guess you could purchase this tube and the whatever that device is look like a heat pump and you can you can make one that's actually probably the most plausible thing to try um, but I gotta find out what that is I'll need your your help to do that so go over to the forums make some discussions here you can see the uh, all four of those EPG systems in the pile of goodies at Stan Meyer's estate. Going backwards, let's see. All right, now this photograph was taken from the internet, and as you can see, let me zoom in here. This is why I state that this is made from Stan Meyer's himself. Bad reflection there. But you see this right here? That looks like the base of a control knob. These coils look identical. The plates look like clear plexiglass. All the connectors, you can see all the connectors here, are the 9-pin connectors. That's what Stan did on all of his other systems. You can see the plexiglass plate. You can see the feet. You can see the transformer. You can see the controls. They're all identical. This whole system is identical. So in my opinion, this was one of the last versions, the full function, uh, you know, run, run your whatever you want on particles of <laughs> magnetized gas system, okay? It's got one, two, three, four, five, six layers here. Now, the only difference between this and the other EPGs is this wire is laid out flat and not coiled together, all right? that you have to really pay attention to. There's something interesting there. There's only one layer of copper. If you go down to the bottom, you can see right here, you can see in between the layers of wire, there's only what looks like about one layer of copper there. 
uh, which is the reason I wrapped mine that way. I had this photograph a long, long time ago that I shared with you, and in my opinion, uh, that might be the way to go. Because this whole, after all those other tests, surely you wouldn't build this one that big and not uh, not figure out something different that worked better. Okay, now there's ten coils here, and in my opinion, this circuit board you can see, you can see connectors around the outside of this circuit board, all right, which looks like the identical circuit board that was in the other EPG. So my opinion is that it's really close, it really laid out the same, or it is identical. Here is what I've done for everyone. I have actually made measurements. I'll let you look at this on your own, but I've measured all the different things here and tried to get you an idea. Now, this whole measurement scheme is based off an 18-inch diameter uh, circle here. And in, in the videos, you find 18 inches. So I figured I'd go with 18 inches. And everything else is measured from that. I did that in Google SketchUp. Great program. All right, back to the beginning. So let's go back to this other circuit, and I'm going to try to explain it to you. All right. Uh, let's see if we can find a better one. There you go. All right, now here's what we got. You got the same layout. You've got an incoming voltage rectified through the three caps, through the voltage regulator. Here you can see the two um, tensiometers. On the other one you can't. Capacitor for this. Uh, you, here you have the dip switches and the chips. Um, and then resistors from the dip switches to wires. And then you've got the transistors. You've got 10 transistors around here. You've got opto isolators. Each one around here is an opto isolator with its own resistor. With uh, each coil has its own diode. It's laid out the exact same as this one, except there's 10 of them. All right. And here's how this circuit works. I've traced this down. I've looked at it. You can do it for yourself. Double check it. Make sure I'm correct. Here's what it is. You got a 555 timer. You've got the decade counters or the divide bys, all right? And like I said, the last two are not hooked up, so you divide by 10, 10, and 10, okay? And this this turns the frequency into multiple, so you can play with all different stuff. Now, what's weird is that he's got he's got them all hooked up to the last chip, so he's dividing get all the way down here, um, which is rather interesting to me. So look that over, make sure I'm right. These three chips are hex inverters. And what I can tell is that this set of coils down here, all right, is hooked up to half of these dip switches, which is hooked up to a chip and a half of these inverters. So when this signal is high, let me just get my markers out and I'll just show you. Okay, so you got a signal here like this. Can you see that all right? Yeah, I'm going to use a different color maybe. Maybe we'll use black. Maybe I can move this photograph over. All right, we'll just draw it here. So you've got a signal that looks like this. All right, now I'm out of the screen. I'll get here one day, guys. You've got a signal that looks like this. All right, so you've got a high hump, and that is half of these. So half of these. Okay, and then we'll just use green for the other half. All right, and they are pulsed like this. All right. So you've got a high pulse and a high pulse, and they're both 100 degrees out. All right. The pulse coming out of here, let's just make it high, and then it goes directly to five of these, okay, which then goes out to each one of these wires, which goes out to each one of these, um, five of them, the opto isolators, and each one of those goes to transistors, which goes to the coil. So basically, this coil can be pulsed high, while this one's low, this one can go high, while this one's low, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All the dip switches do is tell how many coils you want to pulse. So we can pulse just the first two back and forth, or three over here and one over here, or all over here and none over here. Uh, from what I can understand, that's it. Nothing else to it. It's not any more special than that. 
These, from what I can tell, do not fire in a sequence. They fire all together. Alright? So, do your own looking, do your own research, come over to the forums, post your own ideas, tell me if I'm wrong. I'm not always right. Do your own work for yourself. Alright guys, so, uh, that's what I can tell you. Um, here's the back of the circuit board. You can go through the hex inverters. You can see where the wires go. Uh, this is going to be hard to see. See if I can trace this out for you. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, they still run through the hex inverters, but they're the opposite. One is inverted and one is not. Alright, so let's see. So, Alright, here you've got the signal coming off. Okay, and they go into the hex inverters. All right, you got one. Let's see how many you got. Okay, looks like you got one and one, and then four and four. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, they're all in there. So all this chip does is take one signal and invert it, and one signal and don't invert it. See what I'm saying? So this one's all pulsing one way, and this one's all pulsing the other way, and they all go to that. Right here is where the uh, dip switches are, resistors, and then the wires. Okay, this pin's coming off of your pulsing circuit. And then the some of them invert, some of them do not, depending on where they go. Depending on which chip they go to from this chip. Uh, you can see the output here. This is a resistor, then an LED. LED's here, resistor's here. That's to tell it when it's pulsing. Okay. I've, I've traced this all down for you, but uh, do it for yourself so that you can prove me wrong or prove me right and understand it for yourself because what I'm telling you um, isn't good enough. You need to study it for yourself. But I am going to tell you not, in my opinion, not to go and try to replicate this circuit. Personally, I do not think there's anything special about it. Okay? Just stick that in the back of your head. Don't just go build this because we've got it. All right? Think for yourself. Do your own work. Figure it out. Replicating an idea is fantastic. Um, but improving on an idea is much better. Alright. So those are the photographs. Wow. That's close. Alright. Those are the photographs. Again, without your help, I would not have gotten these. Um, through, the, through connections of people and... Um, being having donations to actually purchase these. Here's what I want to tell you. I want to throw this at you guys. I want to tell you not to go and replicate this stuff perfectly um, and identically because I think there's always improvements. We now have what uh, are called microprocessors. The Arduino here, which is one of them, all right, is a generic, simple microprocessor that you can do whatever you want with. Williams Programming the microprocessor to do pulse firing or all firing or you can have pick how many outputs you want it does everything that that board does and a lot a lot more alright so what I'm telling you is if you want to build that circuit and study it fantastic please share with everybody what and how and how it works um, but after studying it and understanding how it works it's not anything special um, now the EPG itself, if you want to study that and figure out, you know, use copper, um, make it look identical and, and try it out. Perfect. That's fine. But just remember that the circuitry isn't anything special in my opinion. Uh, a microprocessor, programmable controller, um, or even just some other generic circuitry will work just fine for these tests. So I'm very, I'm actually very relieved that there's not anything special going on here. It's just all straightforward. You put some magnetic gas in this thing, or ferrofluid, or any type of other medium that is going to work correctly. Pulse it however you want it, and it outputs. That's what the patent says. You can pulse it with whatever thing you want, anything you want. If you want to put AC right out of a low, uh, a step-down transformer directly into the primaries of this device, out comes the secondary, uh, same waveform, multiple or you know higher amplitude hopefully more voltage more amperage that's it it's so cool to be able to have these photographs and to be able to give them away 
Um, you have probably seen some of these photographs leaked out. Um, Tony Woodside is doing some extraordinary work on these things. Um, he's, he's doing some really good stuff. I actually have not been in contact with him, but I will be shortly. Uh, he has released some of the photographs um, of the EPGs, but they are not high, high quality. They're slightly lower quality. I'm not sure why that is. But these are the highest quality, best photographs you're going to find of the EPG system, um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, these are the originals, put it that way. I know that for a fact. I'm telling you they are the originals. So, with that said, happy building, guys. Come over to the forums, open-source-energy.org, and my, and my website, rwgresearch.com. If you give that one away, you can get to the, either one of those two websites uh, between the two. Uh, if you want to donate towards this research, you can do that. If you donate your time, donate your resources, donate your uh, junk you got laying around, hey, call me up. Um, you know, get, get in contact with me. Send me an email, rwg42985 at aol.com. All this information is on my website. Please feel free to contact me. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer those. Um, that's it. That's all I have to say. Uh, I just want to say thank you all for allowing me to have this opportunity to give back and to have the opportunity to actually have access to stuff like this. Uh, and I really honestly could not do it without your help. I'll leave you all with that. This is Russ, rwgresearch.com. Looking forward for more very cool, exciting things coming up. Um, I can't wait. I just can't wait to get to get this stuff working, get this stuff going uh, for all of us. Humanity uh, and everybody in this whole entire world that is truly needing and wanting this type of stuff to happen. Let's make it happen. All right? See you guys. Peace.